welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. Uh, up for restoring this week, I've got a Matchbox Series number 33 uh, Ford Zephyr. Um, as you can see, this box has seen some better days. It's got a uh, mix of a couple different repairs. This corner here looks like there's some uh, sellotape on it. Um, across the front of the box and around the end here, there's some masking tape. Um, so we're going to do a full box restoration on this. Uh, we're going to remove all those previous repairs, remove all the adhesive, try to get that cleaned up, um, and use our um, either the craft paper tape or the uh, archival uh, mending tissue methods to uh, permanently fix, uh, repair those end flaps in a way that, you know, it's going to ensure that this box lasts for another 50 years. Um, when I purchased this model, I did actually get with it the car. And this car I got, um, I, I wouldn't say it's mint or even near mint, I'd say it's good. Um, but I got it because it has silver plastic wheels. Um, all my other models, I've got a later model here that has the black plastic wheels on it. Um, and I didn't yet have a silver plastic wheel uh, variant in my set. I've noticed a couple other differences on these. You see the later models, they didn't paint the bumpers. On the earlier model, they did. Um, and these are both in, I, I would call it, good play-worn condition. Um, you know, they've got some chips and scratches in the paint. Uh, obviously, well loved by the, the children that owned them at one point in history. Um, so, I'm glad to have both of them in my collections. Um, but neither one of these would I consider restoring. Um, I think these are both uh, pretty pretty good, pretty perfect, just how they are, and I'd want to keep them uh, just how they are. So, in order to do a restoration video, I need one that's worth restoring, and that's why I came up with this little beauty. So, as you can see, um, this one's had a rough life. Uh, it's got the shattered glass there in the front. It's got a bunch of junk on the inside of the car. Um, very scratched and worn off paint. You can see the uh, tow hook on the end is busted off there. Um, not sure why they put tow hooks on all these cars other than just so that kids could play with them with all of their trailers. You know, I'm not going to buy a trailer if I don't have a car that I can pull it. Um, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to restore that hook on the back or if I might just dremel that off flush. Um, but as you can see, uh, this one has definitely seen better days, and I feel like it has deteriorated to the point where it is a good candidate for restoration. Um, so to begin with, we're going to hit our box. Um, I'm going to do this as a two-part video since the restorations seem to take so long and the videos get so long. So part one, we're going to do the box, and part two, we will do the car. To begin the restoration of our box, uh, the first thing we've got to try to do is take off uh, some of these previous repairs that were made. Um, these ones here with the sellotape are, are not bad. Uh, they're not good either, but um, I'm going to see if I can get those off. If I can't, you know, that's not the end of the world. It's, it's still a repair. Um, but this for sure, I want to try to get off this masking tape especially because it's blocking part of our artwork. Um, as you can see, it's quite old, it's quite brittle. Um, I've already been able to get up a corner of this. And so the method that I'm gonna use to try to get that adhesive on that old dried out masking tape to let go is a little bit of lighter fluid. Um, to do that, I'm gonna put just a liberal amount there on the end of a Q-tip. Um, and start working that down in the corner. One of the advantages of using the lighter fluid is that even though it has a really good effect on the adhesives, um, it doesn't seem to have any effect on the ink on the box. 
Um, I've tried a few other methods to get uh, adhesive or old tape to let loose of a box and all of them, um, all the other products that I've tried, especially the adhesive removers or things that are made specifically for this purpose, um, they all tend to have some negative effect on the ink or cause some discoloration on the box. Um, so this is, this is the only method that I've ever found that doesn't negatively impact um, whatever the surface is that's underneath. So that's why I'm going to go with it. So you can see we actually had two pieces of masking tape there. Um, that first piece has come off remarkably well. There's a little bit of adhesive on the surface there. Um, and I think, you know, I can take some of that off to a point. Um, I'm obviously, at one point, I'm, I'm going to get to where if I really go any more at it, I will start to take the ink off. So I want to be as gentle as I can, get what I can off, and really try to preserve what's underneath because um, I think that's more important. So for this next piece, I want to see if I, yeah, it's a little bit loose. Get a little bit back behind there. Um, occasionally, if I can't deliver enough with the Q-tip, um, I will just apply the uh, lighter fluid directly to the box. Um, and that does a couple things. A lot of times it will let it a little bit more uh, flow down behind the tape to really loosen it up. Um, and if I'm, if I got a piece that's really stuck and I really just want to hit it hard, um, just flooding it with a little bit more will usually do the trick. All right, so we've got that piece loose from our end here. So now that we've got uh, the one piece off here, I'm actually gonna try to work this from the other end. I'm gonna come back on this surface and see that is really stuck on there. Um, so I'm gonna try to just do a direct application and see what I can get if I just flood that box. Uh, see if I can get any of that tape to let loose. If I can get any of the lighter fluid to get underneath, usually I can, I can get that. There we go. There we go. Worked perfect. So I don't want to take it too far. Um, as soon as it's loose, I'm going to come back, let the fluid do its work, right? So. As soon as I can get underneath that tape, I'll work it down. As that adhesive dissolves from the lighter fluid, I can get it to come off. You'll see after a while, your Q-tip will kind of turn like a, an orangey color, yellow orangey color. Um, if it starts turning the color of your ink, you're spending too much time in that area. go so those were those were the two easy ones kind of the, the low-hanging fruit here let's see we'll get what we can with the rest of this off I'm not too worried about it because um, we've we've got our artwork back and that was the main thing so the next one I'm gonna try I think will be uh, this sellotape here on the end I see, that's pretty dry anyway. It all already kind of wants to come loose. I just want to make sure that I can leave any of the artwork that's underneath it there. I don't want it to take off anything. That worked like a charm. You can see I've got uh, a little corner, looks like a little corner of the, the box or a little flap of the ink that came off with that tape. So I'm going to see if I can save that end piece. Here we go. Let's see if we can uh, put that back on the box. So 
Let's set that aside. Let's see if we can get that right back on there. Another dry piece of tape here. And now we can see that that is actually the attachment side for this box. And the only thing that was really holding it in was the end flap there. So that is definitely, I think, a repair that we can make. I think we've got all the pieces there to be able to fix that end flap. So that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna set these aside. Um, I like to work kind of, you know, doing the same thing until I'm done with the box. So we've got one more side. I think this is a much more recent um, attempt at a repair because this does seem very well adhered. Um, so we're gonna do our best to try to get this up. So to begin, you can see I kind of doused that corner of this adhesive uh, with a little bit of the lighter fluid. Um, another tool I like to use, get terribly complicated here, it's just a uh, toothpick. Um, kind of lets me get in those tighter areas. The wood I know is not going to um, cut the box or you know scratch or uh, get into anything and it's just fine enough that usually I can work it down just like that underneath the adhesive. So I want to be careful now that I've got that kind of opened up a little bit that I let my lighter fluid get underneath there and do its job. So I've got a pretty liberal amount in that little squirt which is good um, let it get in there and do some work on that adhesive I can see right here on this end I'm starting to get some of that box paper coming up right there so um, you know it's better for me to get all the tape off if I've got to go back and get a few of those pieces off of the tape and glue them back on the box, I can do that. But I wanna to try to get this off in its entirety if possible. So as you can see, we were able to successfully remove all of the previous repairs and all the tape from this box. Um, so let's take a look at it, see what we've got. Um, this flap here, I'm not even really sure why it was taped. Um, it's not torn or ripped at all, um, unless maybe just because they saw this one tear, they decided to preemptively try to to reinforce uh, this side, I, I'm not really sure other than, than for that reason. Um, we've got this little patch on the top here. Um, this is really not that uncommon. Um, and my theory on this is this is where the retailers stuck their price tag stickers, um, depending on you know what price they sold them at. And I think most parents, or especially if a kid got this for a uh, birthday or something like that, they were gonna peel that sticker off. So I think most of the time when I find that little uh, scab there on the top, um, I'm assuming that it was at one point a price tag or price sticker. Um, so now we can get on to our repairs on this. So as I look at the box, you can see I've got one little tear here um, and that's really pretty minor. I've got another one about halfway across this end flap. Um, and so I think both of those I can do just with the mending tissue. Um, and this, you know, maybe this sort of delamination in here where that cardboard is coming apart, that may have been part of the reason for that other, uh, that earlier repair too. So I think I'll go ahead and I'll try my mending tissue on these, these two here for sure. Um, on this other one, I think I'm actually gonna end up doing a combination of a couple different things. 
Um, I'm going to use the craft paper tape to back this uh, to strengthen it and give me something that I can stick all these pieces down to. Um, and I'm going to try my archival uh, adhesive for putting this little scrap of paper back on the top here. Um, and when I get everything done and set and all those layers of torn and ripped cardboard put back together, um, I think I will top it with a little piece of mending tissue just to protect that um, a little bit more and make sure that nothing comes apart um, because these are already you know weaker areas thanks to uh, the previous damage that's there. So to start our repair on the end flap that is still attached, I'm going to cut off a piece of our mending tissue. I found that the best method uh, to get this started is really just to kind of pick at a corner. I usually end up mangling it, um, but get it started with my tweezers and then try to make that a piece that I can cut off from my final box repair. So I'll get my, hey, that one actually doesn't look too bad. I think we can use that. So I get it started. You don't want to remove it all from the backing piece. Um, if you do, it's going to curl up and be next to impossible to work with. Um, so I was able to get a couple of those little scraps um, here at the top of the box and then some of these along here. I was able to get those free from that previous tape repair. So I wanted to put those back on. You can see this one's kind of, uh, kind of floating on me. But I definitely want to make sure that I've got that in place before I put my repair down because that will stick it permanent. All right, so to start, I'm gonna overlay that piece to hold that in place. I, can do that. I want to kind of line this up as I take it down, see where it is. If I need to do more than one layer of this, I certainly can. Um, so I'm going to use my burnishing tool to work it down this way. I have Got another little piece here. Goes on the end. I'll make sure I get that in the right spot before I stick that down. I'm trying to get this up. Hopefully where you all can see it. is where the magic happens because as I burnish over the top of that mending tape it just likes to almost dissolve and disappear into whatever whatever it's backing. Alright, I'm going to take this end piece. I'm actually going to wrap part of this around just to protect that end. So I'm going to cut this piece off here. I'm going to take that last little bit and wrap it around the end and burnish that down as well. Just a little more support in there. I'm pretty happy with the first repair. As you can kind of see, there is still an edge up right here along where some of those pieces were torn off. So I'm gonna do one more 
strip of the mending tissue across the top there. And I want to overlay it a little bit on our previous repair as well. Get it started there. And then slowly work it across. So I did go ahead. There was still a few little edges that were poking up right along where I made that repair. And so I, I wanted to put one more piece of the mending tissue across the end of the box there. So that should finish up that repair. And I'm not sure yet, I haven't really used this stuff enough to know if I like it better than the method that I was doing before. I do feel like it's a little more professional option, um, but you know, it's definitely something that you still see. It's not horribly noticeable, um, but it is noticeable. You know, it, it does show up as a difference on the box. Um, last repair I've got on this end flap is this tear that goes about halfway across. Um, and I think I'm gonna make this a two-sided repair, so I may see if I can wrap down and across the top, um, or maybe I'll do two separate pieces. I don't know which is gonna work better just yet. So I've cut another piece of the mending tissue, and I'm gonna start that out, same as before. I'm actually gonna start it off because I, I really kind of bungled that little corner there and I wanna be able to trim that off. Um, make sure that I am centered over the repair. Use my burnishing tool just to get it started and then slowly work it across just like that. So you can see kind of the darker areas where I was able to burnish it down. You see these lighter areas showing up here. As I run my burnishing tool across, those will disappear. And then I'll take my shears and come right in at the edge and trim those off nice and flush. That actually looks pretty decent on that end. I don't need as large of a piece in here because it's not going all the way across. So I clip a much shorter piece. Again, the most tedious and fiddly part of this is getting it started. See on that one, I didn't do a great job. I ended up sticking that corner over on itself. And that's why I always recommend cutting a little bit extra, leaving that little corner where, where you know you're gonna bungle it off of the box or off of the repair that you're trying to make. Get that stuck down. And I'll work, work this back across. So our backing sheet, there we go. And I can come in with my little mini shears. Just trim that off. There we go. And 
that will complete our repair on that end flap. So now we have really the more difficult side over here to do. Um, and that's gonna take a little bit of every single one of the methods that I know how to use in order to be able to repair it. To make this repair, I'm gonna start with a piece of our paper tape. Um, I've got a link in the description to where you can get this. Uh, it's a craft paper style tape. It's got a water-based adhesive on one side. Um, and I really, really like working with it. Um, it's almost the exact same color as the inside of the box. And uh, most of the repairs, you know, just kind of disappear when I'm done with them. Um, but for this repair, I know that I'm gonna need something a little more substantial that can provide some support um, on this piece. I do wanna be careful though, because as you can see, the way this end flap tore, it actually is gonna need to overlap that piece that's still on the box. So in uh, some of my other videos, you'll see where I start with this and, and stick it. Uh, in this case, I can't do that because I actually need to stick this piece first, um, get a little adhesive on the top and then be able to overlap that onto it. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just measure out where uh, my paper tape is gonna need to be cut or trimmed. And I do that just by aligning it to one edge of the box and then folding over um, the other side. And that, you know, it's pretty low tech, but it seems to work very well for me. Once I've started that fold, um, I can get that to be a nicer crease with my burnishing tool. And then when I do my trim, with the shears, I wanna trim just on the inside of that line to make sure that the piece that I'm cutting is just slightly smaller than what we measured out because it has to go inside of the box, not on the outside where we took our measurements from. So after we get it cut, I always like to do a dry fit, um, just a test fit to see and in this case, I can come all the way through my box. I'll still have plenty on the other end to adhere to, so this piece is good enough to, to get going with. Um, I do wanna make sure that I kinda of mark, you know, how far out I need to go. And then this takes actually just a little finesse. Um, You'll have to try it a few times. You want enough water on there to make sure that all of your glue is activated. If you go too much, you, you can actually wash the glue off, um, which totally defeats the purpose of the repair that you're trying to make. So, got this fit. I really, most of the time I like to do this just by touch, just with my fingers. Um, seems to be able to feel where everything is at way better. Um, so that looks like it's positioned pretty good. And then before this gets too dry, I'm gonna want to layer over this piece. Um, the other thing that I want to do before I, do, uh, before I put the end flap on is I want to add a little bit of the neutral pH adhesive to that portion of the end flap where it overlaps. It's not, oh, because it's brand new. I haven't taken my label off. You know what? I think I may actually be able to use that just right off of piece. I don't need very much of this glue. Um, just enough to take care of where that tear overlaps those different pieces. So, a little of that adhesive work down in there. That actually looks pretty good. And now we can position the end flap.
I'm gonna use my burnishing tool to make sure that that gets stuck down good to the paper tape below. Actually worked quite well. And the last piece that we have is our little part that came off. I'm gonna, again, try to use some of the archival glue. And I'm just gonna apply that right on the surface to the area where that little flap needs to go. And I like using the tweezers just because it lets me really position perfectly where that piece fits and where those flaps need to line up. Come back in. I'm really just trying to apply even pressure down. Um, I don't want to push and burnish this as much because that little end flap is just in there floating on a bed of glue right now. So if I push it too hard, it's just gonna, gonna move on me and I've got it right where I want it. So, so our repairs had an hour or so to dry. Um, and I'm gonna come back on the top of that with one more little strip of the mending tissue. And this is really meant just to help keep everything that's been glued down, um, to help keep it stuck where it is. Um, right now, you know, I've got all those little layers just perfectly lined up so that the graphic was completely restored. And I'm, I'm worried that <laughs> if there's anything that hits the surface of that box at all, that it's just gonna take those and peel it right up. So I wanna give just another layer of protection, especially over um, this little piece here that we repaired. So I'm gonna start with my tape off this end a little bit. I got, again, I got that boogered up corner that I don't want to be a permanent part of this repair. And I'm gonna use my burnishing tool um, where I start that repair over to the other end here. And once I've got that all set, then I just need to go over it really well. Um, burnish that in, that activates all the glue in this and helps it to stay stuck where I've got it put. to where we started with. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. The last thing we need to do is trim off our excess paper tape from the end of our box. That's where I really like these little mini shears because they let me get really close, really precise right to the edge of the box. Um, I don't want to cut the original box at all. I only want to cut the paper tape that's behind it. So these do a pretty darn good job of that and I've been very, very happy with them so far. So now the last step to do is what we do with all of our boxes and that is I give them one final press um, now that we have all the repairs made and once that is done we will be able to move on to the car. And you can see in most of these, I'm not moving the iron around as much. Um, sometimes I can do that, but 
Again, I'm concerned for the repairs. I want to press it, but I don't want to move it too much. If I move it, I'd have the chance of undoing everything that I just just repaired and just did. So um, just a straight press down and that will be good. Well, I'm seeing here, I've got a little section of that paper tape that I forgot to trim off on this end as well. Let me get that trimmed up. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right. So all we have left to do now is to fold up our restored box. That looks great. And because this box has turned out so nice, um, I'm actually not even gonna put this with our restored car. Instead, I'm going to return the car that I bought with this box, my uh, silver plastic um, Ford Zephyr, and uh, that will complete this piece. So make sure you uh, check out part two for the restoration um, of this car.